ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಟುಡೇ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಐ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಸಿ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಗ್ರಾಸ್ಪ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇ ನೋ ಬಡಿ okay try if you try you will get it actually surprise test is it mohoday no. <laughs> it is not a surprise test i just want to know how much uh, uh, i am able to reach because uh, uh we have uh, it is already one month and uh, next class will be the last class for this uh, uh, veda part we will be going to vedangas uh, from uh, um, uh, next week it will be um, uh, yeah, yeah, discussion on uh, yagnas and vedas only and after that we will be going to vedangas so i want to see how much uh, you people have Uh, understood what you have understood like that if you want to prepare and then uh, talk in the next class that is also fine hmm? okay so next class uh, you can uh, uh, i won't uh, talk anything you people would be doing all the uh, talking okay asto see and welcome you all to the fifth session of indic knowledge landscape an overview this is all an overview only we are not going so deep into any of the subjects okay and let us have a recap of what we have learned in the previous four sessions hmm? before going on to the next topic till now we have learned that there are three levels of learning first one is para vidya second one is apara vidya third one is kala para vidya is also called brahma vidya where we have 32 branches and one nyasa vidya which is complete surrender to the ultimate in apara vidya we have 14 branches they are pure sciences here uh, these 14 branches are called chaturdasha vidya sthanani there are four vedas six vedangas then four upangas and the kala has uh, it is the it is called applied sciences and uh, we have 64 uh, kalas and among the uh, apara vidya that is what is the major uh, discussion uh, what we are discussing majorly is about apara vidya the 14 uh, vidya sthanas we should remember that sage vyasa sage patanjali and then panini maharshi these three maharshis have contributed immensely to to uh, nurture this uh, knowledge base 
And among the Vedas, we have Rig Veda, then Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Atharva Veda. Vedangas are Shiksha, Vyakarana, Chandas, Nirutta, Kalpa, and Jyotisha. And here, Upangas are Mimamsa, Nyaya Vistara, then Purana, and Dharma Shastra. Among the Vedas, we have each of the Vedas are divided into Samhita, Brahmana, Aranyaka, and Upanishad. And we have discussed in brief about the Yajnas also that we will be taking up in detail in the next session. And we have Darshanas which are Purva Mimamsa, Uttara Mimamsa, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Sankhya and Yoga. Each of these are prop propagated by various Rishis and Acharyas. Then, uh, what, a, what should be the goal in our life? Nobody forces us to go for moksha only. One can choose any of the four purusharthas, our goals. They are to be achieved are called purusharthas, dharma, artha, kama and moksha. So, using these knowledge base, bases, we can choose whichever path we want to proceed in. Then, we have uh, seen uh, how uh, different levels of knowledge are uh, uh, broadly divided and then how Vidya and Kala play a role. Then classification of Vedas. Vedas as sources of all knowledge. Then we also discussed about Pramanas, right? And uh, Shabda Pramana plays a major role in uh, understanding the concept behind the Chaturdasha Vidya Sthanas. Then uh, we also discussed about these uh, aspects of Samhita. What what is the what does the Samhita contain? What does Brahmana contain? And Aranyaka, Upanishad, and all those things. And uh, we also learned that Atharva Veda doesn't have this Aranyaka part. Then we have the uh, concept of uh, mantra, chandas, and accent, udarta, anudarta, and uh, swarita. Then, what is the need for the for uh, maintaining the oral tradition? What is the um, how, how important is oral tradition? That also we have learned. Then, the purpose and utility of uh, Veda, Vedic mantras, then the process of creation from Vedic perspective, that also we have seen in the previous session. Concept of Nama, Rupa and Kritya. Hmm? Whatever is created has a name and it has a form and it has a purpose. Without purpose, nothing is created. Then the how this uh, creation happens, that also we discussed. Then uh, the concept of Panchabhutas, the five elements we have discussed. And then this uh, Panchi Karana, how the elements are mixed to arrive at different um, uh, 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 creation of different species. Then uh, different tattvas also we discussed. So today <clears throat> we will uh, see how so, so, some questions are there actually. Uh, like people say, 
mantra is uh, um, is uh, um, created by uh, uh, somebody some rishi like that so that we have to understand sage vishwamitra he did not compose the gayatri mantra he only received the gayatri mantra through his his own efforts he did a lot of tapas and the mantra was revealed to him so this traditional view what it says has been mentioned in the brahma sutras of uh, sage vyasa then in the purva mimamsa sutras of jaimini maharshi and then the manu smriti also talks about this this divine knowledge so a mantra is see, uh, they say it is drushta drushta means it is not directly seen by the eyes it is re received by the rishis and they are not uh, created by somebody not composed and then these veda mantras are always present in they always exist actually and they can be recited by those who have the ability to recite without errors then we call these those who received these mantras as rishis the rishi that is also who should receive which mantra that is also that also is decided before whatever is um, made available to us so these rishis they do a lot of tapas or penance or austerity or meditation whatever name we want to call it and by doing uh, rigorous tapas it, they uh, they make themselves capable of receiving this eternal knowledge then though it exists at all times not everyone can hear these mantras why is it why is it so it is because like the radio waves not everybody can um uh, receive the radio waves isn't it only through certain conditions we are able to catch the radio waves same way vedic knowledge can be received only by those who put in a lot of effort to get them to receive them to make uh, they make themselves capable to receive the mantras there are two types of rishis uh like the sanakadi rishis we say the, the what uh, happened was when brahma uh, when he created he started uh, the work of creation initially the sanakadi rishis were created to help him to assist him in his work of creation but the sanakadi rishis they refused they said no we don't want any material pursuits we would like to continue with our uh, divine uh, pursuits spiritual pursuits so they refused and uh, they continued to hear the vedic mantras which they were already uh, um, transmitted so they the uh, second set of rishis they are like uh, vishwamitra vasishta all these rishis they put in great amount of effort and did a lot of tapas to become capable of receiving the uh, mantras 
in the taittiriya aranyaka there is a mention about how does one become a rishi rishi naam rishitvam kidrasham the text they um, they themselves ask these questions and answer for us for the sake of uh, making us know about uh, these things this is in the swadhyaya brahmana of the taittiriya aranyaka so here it says those who had no blemish blemishes those who stuck to the path of satya and dharma then those who always were in the right path they became capable of receiving the divine blessings it says vatarashanah rishayah shramanah urdhvamanthinah babhuvuh these rishis were not even partaking food they lived only uh, by breathing so that they don't accumulate any sins attached with food intake so many um, it is said that actually whenever we uh, consume food it should be only uh, very little food for sustain sustenance um, what happens we keep harming uh, other uh, plants or animals uh, while taking food and uh, it occurs it um, makes us uh, get into um, um, get more uh, accumulate more sins actually so it is uh, these rishis practiced such a um, life where they didn't even uh, had had the need for food then shramanah they were all the time contemplating about the solutions to all the problems faced by human beings they observed various phenomena in the world the cause and effect of all the happenings around them though all of us wish to be happy that happiness the state of happiness doesn't stay the same always it keeps varying for us so these rishis wanted to find out what is the reason behind this so the upanishad says ajan rishneen tapasyamanan brahma swayambhu abhyanarshat te rishayah abhavan tat rishinam rishitvam so what happened when they wanted to help the humanity when they went in the path of satya and dharma when they became so blemishless brahma himself that para brahman he himself uh, revealed the vedic knowledge to these people so that way they became rishis so here uh, they are the adhikaris actually they are called adhikaris they are the uh, entitled people to receive this knowledge so a person to whom that paratatva gets revealed such a person is called a rishi then uh, shatapatha brahmana says rish is the root meaning tapascharya that also one uh, that also is one uh, explanation for uh, 
the word Rishi. Okay. Then every Vedic mantra has a Rishi who has experienced the Vedic sounds first hand and hence he is an Adhikari. He sits quietly at a place and is receiving that knowledge without traversing physically, without doing any activity um, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, sound or with a lot of uh, noise around him. Huh? Nothing. He simply sits quietly, meditates or uh, do, does the tapas or whatever and he is getting blessed with that knowledge. Then Rishi Vishwamitra also had to struggle a lot. He learned on his own. Then he struggled a lot and then finally Gayatri Mantra was revealed to him. And we have already discussed in our uh, previous lecture that Chaturmukha Brahma is the creator, Srishtikarta. He created the Prajapatis. Prajapatis were created to propagate uh, the Vedic, uh, Vedic knowledge to everybody. So, Prajapatis, from them, the Vedas were taught to Manu and others. So, during uh, Mahapralaya, what happens when the entire universe gets dissolved? Then also, these Vedic mantras, they exist. Brahma teaches these mantras to Prajapatis once the Srishti, uh, the work of Srishti begins. And then they in turn teach these mantras to Manu and others. Prajapatir Manave, Manu Prajabhya is what uh, is said in the um, uh, Manusmriti. Then Chandogya Upanishad says, Vedic knowledge gets transferred right from the time of creation. Thus, this knowledge is eternal, reveals itself to those who are practicing Trikarana Shuddhi. So, what is this Trikarana Shuddhi? It is the uh, what we discussed uh, some time back that is Mano uh, Vak Kaya. From your heart also, you maintain that purity. Then, in your speech also, you don't tell any lies or you don't cheat anybody. And um, uh, um, Mano Vak Kaya. Kaya is Sharira. With this body also, we are uh, maintaining all the cleanliness. All the, all the three types of uh, cleanliness is maintained. And that way, uh, we, be we become capable adhikaris. Then, this knowledge is called Arshaya. That is Rishi Pranita. Uh, means which has come from the Rishis. So, it is not some guesswork or it is not something created by someone or it is not something uh, inferred. Hmm? Then, Manusmriti says, when the Chaturyuga cycle, we all know that Krita Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapara Yuga and Kali Yuga. These are the four Yugas and it's a cycle. Once that uh, Chaturyuga cycle comes to an end, all the Vedas become Antarhita. That means uh, whatever elements, the five elements were created and all uh, so many species were created, everything uh, gets dissolved and everything goes back to the Parabrahma. 
again when the srishti karya begins that is yugaadi hmm, then these will be revealed the mantras vedic mantras will be revealed to the rishis till then there would be no one to discuss or propagate or to talk about these vedic mantras that's why it is said yugante antarhitan vedan setihasan maharshaya purvam tapasa lebhire anugnyata svayam bhuva these maharshis tapasa lebhire they did a lot of tapas and uh, they did a lot of tapas and uh, acquired these mantras and also with the blessings of swayam brahma then uh, we have a chain of rishis actually here prajapati manu brahmarshi saptarshi devarshi like that and <clears throat> there is no beginning or no end to the Ved vedas it is eternal and the vedara shabda rashi is the only manual or instruction book for any activity and we have uh, this uh, um, talk about whether vedas are uh, revealed or created so traditionally what we understand is that vedas are revealed knowledge only it doesn't mean that the mantras are simply recited actually the usefulness of the mantras their applicability their effects are all assimilated well and then they are propagated and another important point here is many people say rigveda came first followed by athar um, yajurveda followed by samaveda followed by atharva veda and the, the, there was some samhita period was uh, there then brahmana period was there then like this. we keep hearing such arguments all this argument is not accepted revisionally there are abadhita pramanas which say that this which establish that these vedic mantras remain all the time and they may be in use or not someone can bring them back if they are in vogue and continue the propagation whenever there is a reduction in the following or adherence to sanatana dharma somebody who is capable would be getting this knowledge and through him it will revive it will be revived again all shakhas are available all times some times um, it uh, they may be revealed to us sometimes they may be antarhita it is like um, going up and down like a cycle cycle wheel in krita yuga dharma is at its peak adharma is almost nil so what happens gradually dharma goes down and adharma increases as shri krishna says yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam tada atmanam srajami aham srajami aham 
So here, two words are there. One is glani. Another one is hani. When you say, <coughs> uh, suppose there is a plant which is growing very well. Suddenly, due to heat or pollution or some other cause, it starts withering. It loses its energy and its growth becomes slow. So, uh, that is, that means the plant is drying up. So, glana means drying up. It is not to be understood as destruction or death or end of it. So, here Shri Krishna has not used uh, Hanir Bhavati. He has only said Glani. Hmm? Whenever Dharma, Dharmasya Glani Bhavati, whenever Dharma uh, is affected, then Dharma goes down from its highest glory or pinnacle. Abhyutthanam adharmasya. Then adharma starts raising its head. So what happens when adharma goes beyond a certain level? Tada, then atmanam srajami aham. I will reincarnate. I am the custodian. I am the protector of dharma. No one needs to worry. When dharma is at 100%, all the mantras are available. There will be right adhikaris. Many adhikaris would be receiving the knowledge and also they will be propagating to many people. When adharma is ruling, all one has to do is follow his swadharma. So, what, what do you understand by Swadharma here? Can anybody tell me? What is Swadharma? <coughs> so, here, um, Swadharma means uh, many people uh, take it in different ways. Actually, Shri Krishna himself has told us actually, in Bhagavad Gita. Swadharme nidhanam shreyaha paradharmo bhayavaha. Don't go in search of something uh, new or uh, uh, don't try to uh, 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 suddenly change uh, things. Whatever has been handed, oh, handed over to you by your elders, by your uh, teachers, your acharyas, your uh, rishis. Follow that path. That is Swadharma. So here, uh, uh, this uh, uh, 18th chapter also uh, of Bhagavad Gita uh, quotes uh, Adhishthanam tatha karta karanancha prithag vidham dividhacha prithag cheshta daivam chevatra panchamam. Here also, uh, body is the Adhishthana. Tatha karta, who is the doer here? All the actions, whatever we feel that anxiety or desire or hate or happiness or misery, whatever we experience, is it the body or the soul? Hmm? That we have to think about. And uh, if we go through this mantra from Mundakopanishad, Nayamatma pravachanena labhyaha na medhaya na bahuna shutena yameva yeshaha brunute tena labhyaha tas yesha atma vibrunute tanum swam. So our duty, find means and work on ourselves, how we improve ourselves and become capable adhikaris to receive that divine knowledge. All of us can do it actually. 
everybody can become a rishi it is in our own hands and um, oh, not not by listening to pravachanas uh, it is available not by intellect and uh, not by listening to the <clears throat> uh, great feats of the lord uh, only by doing our duty so dharma and uh, enriching ourselves with uh, good uh, deeds like uh, uh, trying to become blemishless trying to become uh, trying to follow satya trying to follow dharma that way we become eligible and uh, the mantras can be revealed to us that too with divine blessings and um, vedas also help us when uh, many times uh, we uh, uh, get we get into some kind of dilemma that time vedas help us vedas guide us in what in which way to go forward then vedic revelation <laughs> many people say all mantras are in the form of some characters they require someone to speak it out and uh, unless someone uh, works on this we are the others cannot make anything of it the answer to such query is that sound is in the form of waves it exists in akasha and it is up to our capability to see whether we are able to receive this jnana rashi sometimes what happens we get uh, um, most of us who stay in cities know it very well we get stuck in traffic jams so we are not in a position to move forward we cannot go back we cannot take a u turn we cannot do anything we are stuck there for a long period if we observe here and there what the other people are doing uh, sitting in their vehicles in such a chaotic situation also many people would be listening to music they would be chatting with others they cracking jokes sharing food with their dear ones and doing so many things even at that uh, uh, terribly irritating uh, occasion so this proves what does this prove this proves that we have an innate capability to filter out the irritability anger frustration restlessness everything and focus on activities which are favorite to us despite their being a cacophony of sounds isn't it if the activity is very dear to us we don't mind any of the external noise or external disturbances so the five basic gunas shabda sparsha roopa rasa and gandha <clears throat> they have their own um, um, mechanism which is given to all of us and they are innate to everybody we only need to train ourselves for this through continuous efforts and another question uh, asked about brahma sutras if anybody says vedas are eternal there are certain anomalies vedas do mention some of the names of the rishis devatas places things etc question is if these things are mentioned in the vedas they must have been 
historically composed. Then an event, a person or an episode cannot get mentioned unless it has happened earlier and it can only <coughs> be after that event has taken place these, uh, they are mentioned in the Vedic mantras. This objection to Vedas being apaurusheya is called Purva Paksha. So, Sage Vyasa himself has answered this question. Vedas are such texts which are having the guidelines for creation itself. They are not history books. Entire creation takes place based on the Vedic texts. These different worlds which are having finite beginning, finite life and an end. Even these objects they are all created from these Vedic mantras only. This means it is already there in the Vedic mantras how Brahma should appear, when should he appear, then what all should be his abilities, what should Indra be doing and what all should be the abilities of Surya, Chandra, Nakshatra and others. So any object in the universe should have Nama, Rupa and Kritya. They are all described excepting and excepting for Vedas, no one can create anything. Thus, the argument that the events taking precedence to Vedas does not hold ground. Okay, so Veda Shabde Pyaha Eva Adho Deva Dinam Chakara Saha. So from the Veda Shabdas only, Deva Dinam, whatever Brahma uttered, the Deva and others, Devatas were created. All creation takes place from the utterance of Vedic sounds. Then <clears throat> another uh, contradiction, there is meaning for each of the Vedic mantras. The objects denoted by each of the Vedic mantra is called a Devata. This is also an objection raised by Purva Paksha. So we should understand that Every mantra is having four aspects. What are they? Rishi, Chandas, Devata and Viniyoga. Rishi is the person who receives the mantra and propagates. Then <clears throat> Chandas is the arrangement of the words of a mantra if it is in the form of poetry. And this uh, Yajur Veda, which is in the form of prose, that also has a different kind of uh, chandas, which is called Akshara Chandas. Then, <coughs> third aspect is Devata. Any mantra will have some meaning and that will refer to certain object. So, ya tena uchyate sa devata yasya vakyam sa rishihi. These are the sutras given in uh, Purva Mimamsa of Jaini. Then we have uh, uh, Gayatri Ushnik. Anushtuk, Brihati and uh, many more chandas 
which are the names of different arrangement of letters in a mantra to maintain the rhythm. Then the fourth aspect is Vini Yoga. Vini Yoga is the uh, utility of the mantra uh, and uh, how to apply the mantra. That is all uh, described in Vini Yoga. The, so that these uh, fourfold division helps <clears throat> in maintaining the Veda mantras error free. That's why they say Veda mantras are nitya and nirdosha without any dosha, without any errors. Then people keep questioning can we believe in Vedas? So here Vedas talk about things which cannot be easily seen or experienced by our senses. We can, the answer is, we can believe, we should believe in Vedas with utmost faith because it has been handed over to us through an unbroken chain of our ancestors who had the ability to see things as they are. Apaurusheya. What, do you, what is Apaurusheya? A word composed by any person willfully is Paurusheya. Purusheya Kritam. But Vedas are not created by any human being. Also, if it is Paurusheya, there can be errors like Brahma, Pramada and Vipralipsa. What is Brahma? Brahma is such an error where the person himself doesn't know. So he may uh, uh, do some errors while delivering, while composing or while doing something. Then what is Pramada? A person knows it wrongly. He That kind of error also is possible. The third type of uh, error which is more dangerous actually is Vipralipsa. The person knows well but he wants to mislead others by projecting it wrongly. Hmm? These kind of errors <coughs> can affect the validity of the pramanya of a statement. In the case of Vedas, there is no possibility of any errors. Then all the astika darshanas are based on the Vedas, Upanishads also mention the fact that we have been told by our ancestors like this. That it means those people also who were there you, uh, in uh, the Rishis and uh, the Guru Shishya, whoever discussed about the divinity or whatever concepts they discuss, they also never told, yes, yes, we know somebody who created these Veda Mantras or somebody who uh, has uh, been responsible for these Veda Mantras. Nothing. They are also telling, we were also told by our ancestors like this. Purve, purve bhya, vachaha, eta dhuchatu. Hmm? Even the purvachas learnt from their purvachas and then propagated. No one can ever say that such and such a person created these Veda, Veda mantras or the Vedas did not exist before a certain time period. This experience of the unbroken chain of things 
unbroken chain of uh, times immemorial is a valid proof it's a solid proof that vedas are nitya apaurusheya they are eternal then vedas also stand to be the instructions for achieving our goals of life and <clears throat> certain views of late are that in the samhita there could be mantras which are received by the rishis but the brahmana vakyas don't talk about any rishis then it must be paurusheya someone must have created these brahmana vakyas so what we can tell them is that when a person is receiving this vedic knowledge with the blessings of the divine he gets it with all the paraphernalia associated with it this is not for the sake of simple recitation but to realize the complete significance of the mantras to get them utilized wherever necessary all our thoughts are conditioned by our experiences our exposure to the universe no one today can claim that he is exposed to every kind of knowledge every scenario every event that happens in the world we are so small as against the entire universe that we will not be able to fully envisage or understand the entire universe now uh, we have this uh, story of four blind people mm, uh, when they touch uh, one elephant they describe an elephant no so how they describe that like that only and one more example we can tell is there is an mg road uh, in every city of india it can be a 100 feet road and if there is an ant traveling on that road will it be able to visualize the entire road we must understand where we are with respect to the universe and how valid would be our assertion based on our own limitations or abilities if someone wants to say he is a rational thinker he doesn't want to believe in the vedas he can think he can uh, be a rational person but he must know that how limited his abilities are he cannot claim that he cannot accept that which is which cannot be experienced or which has not been experienced by him and that which is not experienced does not exist nobody can claim to be omnipresent omniscient or, or whatever these are all transcendental knowledge then <coughs> those um, who have uh, followed the path have also always had positive results they have uh, uh, been able to help the others around them by propagating this knowledge and they are able to create such a beautiful environment around them and that proves that these 
Vedic mantras, our Vedic knowledge are for many benefits. They are there for our betterment. And then all the uh, this uh, this astika darshanas they are all uh, uh, it is the bedrock you can say for astika darshanas and then when we look up to the master to the to the people who are masters who are spiritually better than us who are elevated who are more accomplished than us as we go forward we realize that there are rishis, devatas, and then a creator for all. These Vedas are venerated, respectable, believable. There is no cause for doubting their wisdom. Sri Krishna himself has told in the Bhagavad Gita, Veda ischa sarvaihi ahameva vedya Vedanta krita Veda videva chaham Vedaihi aham pratipadya aham vedya. All Vedas, without exception, describe me. He is talking about uh, how the Vedas are describing him. They are related to me. Then Aham Pratipadya and then Aham Vedya. Everybody should know about me. Then the he also says uh, the I am aware of the uh, Vedas, entire Vedas. I created Puranas, Brahma Sutras, division of Vedas through Veda Vyasa, teaching, propagating, maintaining, whatever, everything, through somebody I am doing it. Thus, we have a solid proof for Veda being a Paurusheya. The normal objections about the Vedas not being uh, reliable, not being authorless, not being eternal, is that Vedas also look like any other work, any other book, any other text. But we can only say that <clears throat> it is beyond anybody's comprehension to uh, understand the uh, vast knowledge that is available. Then uh, the Vedas are the containers of knowledge. They uh, at all times including how to create something, how to maintain it and how to be happy, how to live harmoniously, how to achieve various goals and uh, so many things are discussed and there is a system of chain, Guru Shishya Parampara we call it, which has been maintaining this treasure. The only way to protect this is to nurture this and be a part of whether we learn the Vedas or not, that is secondary. But to protect the Vedas is our utmost duty. And if we don't do our duty properly, if we don't adhere to our dharma, then it is possible that we are also responsible for the glani of dharma. Then, Swadhyaya and Adhyetavya. They talk about Swadhyaya and Adhyetavya. One should do Adhyayana well. And then, it should be through a guru. Learn in a systematic manner. 
ಗುರುಮುಖ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ ನರ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಡೈಲಿ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಟು ಲೀನ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಅ ನಾಯ್ಸಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಎನಿ ಬಟ್ then uh, we talk about adhikaris who are these adhikaris who can learn the vedas there are different views so swami dayananda saraswati of arya samaj he says everybody is eligible here what happens uh, to practice or to learn the vedic mantras we need to have that capacity first thing. but the benefits of vedic mantras should reach all irrespective of their caste or varna or whatever we call everybody is eligible for the benefits of vedic mantras there is no bar for acquiring knowledge and also <coughs> nobody should be barred from the benefits then what is the significance of vedas what do the vedas talk about it could be anything in creation though some people think only spiritual or philosophical things are discussed in vedas but some people also think there are no evil things in the vedas vedas are pure vedas are only for elevating ourselves from uh, worldly miseries etc but tradition says both good and bad are present there can only be stages which are considered bad at a given condition which can uh, be converted or transformed to become useful or uh, good or uh, better one must be diligent in choosing and shri krishna says in bhagavad gita <coughs> ತ್ರೈಗುಣ್ಯ ವಿಷಯ ವೇದ ಸೊ ಸತ್ವರಜಸಂಡ ತಮೋ ಗುಣ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಗುಣಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎವರ್ ಗುಣ ಇಸ್ ಡಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಬಿಟ್ ದಟ್ ಗುಣ ಮೋರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಥಿಂಕ್ only good things should happen and bad things should never happen everybody should be happy and all those things the second category people are there who have the exactly opposite view and the third category people are neither here nor there they have a different set of uh, uh, mind mindset now sattva guna means ಯಥಾರ್ಥ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಸತ್ವ ಲಘು ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿಕ ವಿಷ್ಟಂ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೀನ್ ಆಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೇ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈವ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಮನಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ರಜೋಗುಣ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ Uh, people who have a more dominant rajoguna they will be provocative more suppressive they try to suppress everybody and uh, be like uh, kings no uh, kings usually have this rajoguna because they have to manage everybody ma- maintain everybody tamas is subdued lazy inert they don't have interest in anything they keep on lazy such people are uh, in such people tamoguna will be uh, 
dominant. But none of these gunas can be absent in any person. Only the proportions may vary. Uh, but uh, Sattva Guna is having its uh, unique uh, uh, importance because Sattvat Sanjayate Jnanam. So, in the food also, whatever food we take, there also, and in the activities we carry on, in the people we associate ourselves with, everywhere these gunas play a great role. That's why we should choose wisely, even while making friends with anybody or having food. Wherever in those days, in uh, earlier days, people would never eat outside because the uh, person who cooks, he also should have such a positive vibration in him that it gets transformed in, uh, to the food also. Uh, transferred to the food also, so that uh, that food eaten by everybody is maintaining that sattva guna. But nowadays, uh, we keep eating everywhere, wherever we find uh, a food joint, we go and eat there. So such things need to be a little, if we observe uh, and bring such small changes, that also helps a lot. So Krishna is saying uh, the Vedas are uh, related to all the three gunas. Nistrai gunyo bhava Arjuna. Hey Arjuna, don't get affected by these gunas. Rise above the, try to rise above them. Then a conscious being, a chetana, should be above the effects of the sattva, rajas and Tamas. This helps in universal benefit. Only when these rishis rose above uh, without getting affected by these uh, gunas, then only they were able to receive this knowledge. And there is another analogy about the Vedas. Yavan artha udapane sarvata samplutodake Tavan Sargeshu Vedeshu is what it comes. Hmm? So, uh, Vedas are like a vast ocean, full to the brim on all sides. Hmm? Yavan Artha Udapane Sarvataha Samplutodake. Such a water body. There also, one would not be able to exhaust all the water. We can only consume according to our own capacity. Thus, take whatever is useful and whatever is beneficial. Vedas contain many things. Even the Asuras, Rakshasas, they also did Veda Dhyana. They also did Tapas. They also did Yagas and achieved various powers. But all they did was to cause disturbance and trauma to others. Thus, knowledge and power can be used either way. It is a double-edged sword. Sattvika, Rajasika, Tamasika approaches to Vedas will bring results accordingly. Hmm? Then we have this uh, Satya Vidya. Truth itself can have multiple levels. And it is difficult to comprehend what is Satya for different contexts. And um, if you observe these scientists, they keep, uh, they do, do a lot of research and they say today uh, something, they have discovered something like that. 
after a certain period some other person would uh, some other scientist would try to disprove what this scientist has proved isn't it so it happens in uh, many occasions so uh, these uh, 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 vedas they are always um, there is no contradiction about them all the other uh, discoveries can uh, be having limitations we need to approach the vedas as uh, the stu uh, students of knowledge and uh, we need to question any theory for our own clarification and about the consistency of the view expressed then also we should not think that we are above the vedas or we know everything there is a uh, limit to our capabilities and then uh, <clears throat> the beauty of indic knowledge systems is that we have always been taught to be grateful respectful to our ancestors our rishis our teachers and nobody stops us from being inquisitive no one stops us from trying to expand our horizon of knowledge but we must always know how much we can achieve on our own and what are our limitations and we it is essential that a guru uh, is able to guide us in the right path uh, we catch hold of a guru who can guide us to uh, walk in the right path then uh, our rishis actually uh, how did they how do they how did they spend time maybe even today there may be rishis uh, we have to search for them and how long did they live and what all things they did if we look at their life rishayah dirgha satratvat dirgham ayuhu avapnuvan the rishis used to do yagna all the time so by this they could have a very long life they could see a lot of correlation between causes and effects of events taking place around them their wisdom and their knowledge have been at most useful which are of the highest order <clears throat> we have also not understood the concept of yagna properly actually if we uh, uh, vedas talk about the um, concept of yagna as uh, all the happenings of the universe are some sort of yagna according to the vedas but in english it is the word yagna is loosely translated as sacrifice but yagna is not a mere sacrifice according to the vedas it is also a form of knowledge vedahi yagnyartham abhi pravrttah there was a rishi lagadha he wrote the vedanga jyotisha with its a vedic astronomic astronomy text it talks about the importance of time of a yagna nirdishta kala prabhavascha yagna yagnas do have a lot of significance lot of importance attached to time aspect different duties are performed at different times 
anything does not qualify to be called a yajna until and unless it is following a disciplined approach and is performed in the prescribed way. So, Vedas are meant for yajnas. Yajnas are time bound. And this uh, uh, and the Vedanga Jyotisha talks about Kala as applicable to the Vaidika Kriya. Tasmat idam Kala Vidhana Shastram Yo Jyotisham Veda Sar Veda Yajnan. Someone who knows the Vedanga Jyotisha which talks about Kala Vidhana which activity needs to be done, when, how, which way, how long, how many times. This Kala related aspect is of multiple types. Yajna is not a sacrifice. Yajnas are of different types. Any activity carried out on a daily basis can be construed as a Yajna. Now we have this uh, <clears throat> uh, cons, uh, this uh, science and technology aspect of Yajnas, which is also mentioned in our uh, course content. Yajnas can be understood in various ways. Vedas are Nitya, Apaurusheya, Nirdushta. They get uh, uh, one gets um, uh, ah, Vedas give equal importance to Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. It is a full, complete, exhaustive system you can see. And Moksha is everlasting but one need not uh, begin with Moksha alone. When a person realizes his happiness is limited in material pursuits, he will automatically turn towards that path. So Vedas do not say anything if uh, a person is an astika also. If a person is doing something knowingly, then he is, he alone is to bear the consequences of his actions. Then, dhriti sadhanam dharmaha, something that is responsible for the equilibrium of the entire universe is called dharma. Dharmaha Vishwasya Jagataha Pratishtha. We should not misunderstand Dharma as religion or philosophy or Sampradaya. Dharma is the foundation of the entire universe on which everything rests. All activities are carried on. That is dharma. Now, how does the sun rise? How do, how do the stars shine? Hmm? How do seasons change? All of these and many more questions are answered in Vedas. A process called yajna is brought here by the rishis. Proper systematic approach of doing something for which one needs to set the goal first actually. There is a step-by-step -step approach. Yajna has a lot of deeper meaning and grammatically it has four <clears throat> meanings. Yaja is the root from which Yajna or Yaga is derived. Yaja means Deva Puja, 
ಸಂಗತಿ ಕರಣ ದಾನ ಸೊ ಯಜ ದೇವ ಪೂಜಾಯಾಂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಧಾತು ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ದ ಹೈಯರ್ ಪವರ್ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ಯೂನ್ ವಿತ್ ದೆಮ್ ವಿ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಯಜ್ಞ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಯಜ ಸಂಗತಿ ಕರಣೆ bringing together many things making things happen coordinating is also one of the meanings of yagna many times we see or experience that so many arrangements are required for celebrations rituals etc on a public platform it takes a lot of effort which is like a yagna Indian marriages are such. <clears throat> a yajna is done on a large scale. It needs a lot of coordination. Many people need to work cohesively, ensuring an effective, meaningful, efficient and successful event. This is called Sangati Karana. Then, Yaja Dhane. this involves giving gifts to people as the chin something that benefits a larger section of society thus yagna has the concept of pleasing the divine forces as the predominant angle nature is also treated as divine devata concept in the vedas is not restricted to certain deities like indra surya etc ya tena uchyate sa devata whatever the mantra describes or whomever the mantra describes that is a devata devatas can be living or non living beings or highly evolved beings also and deva puja involves trees plants creepers and many more things for carrying out a <coughs> yagna at every place where we receive benefit from nature we are expect to expected to give back to nature we are uh, expected to um, pay back uh, these days they have this uh, social uh, corporate social responsibility in uh, many uh, offices no many uh, companies encourage their employees to do corporate uh, take active part in corporate social responsibility so like that every person needs to be responsible then <clears throat> there are mantras homas and many other activities which are there to see that the system gets replenished yagna could be in different forms japa is a form of yagna then tapas is a form of yagna then dravya gnana yagna is there dravya yagna is there then <clears throat> reciting one chapter of veda every day is called brahma yagna vedas have said view life itself as a yagna it is a responsible deliberate action meant to produce good results for the benefit of everybody around you and it should be done through a proper systematic well laid out procedure and we have this we have, we all know about rishi kanva mm, through kalidasa we know actually abhijnana shakuntalam where uh, uh, rishi kanva raises uh, brings up uh, this uh, shakuntala hmm? adopts uh, adopted daughter this uh, kanvarshi he is said to be a kulapati a kulapati is a teacher who trains 10000 students 
so training so many people in 14 vidyasthanas is also a yajna this can be considered as jnana yajna of a very high order then uh, japa yajna where vasishtha rishi vasishtha japatam varaha he does a lot uh, he did a lot of japa all the time for the benefit of the universe he wanted everybody to be benefited and he kept on doing he did not do the japa for his own self he did it for the benefit of everybody bhagavad gita talks about swadhyaya jnana yajna and uh, in dravya yajna we use ghee samit and other bhagras and uh, milk, curd, water, many things are used. And uh, yajnas have different connotations. Common criteria is universal benefit. Whatever yajna we do, it should be for universal benefit. Nothing for our own self, not for our family, not for our dear, uh, near and dear ones. It should be for the benefit of everybody. It should be a deliberate, systematic approach with the seeking of uh, blessings of the divine. Then, this uh, Swadhyaya Brahmana of Taitiriya Aranyaka, it's a, there is a very important chapter in this uh, Aranyaka with regard to yajnas. What does it say? It says, <clears throat> errors that may have been committed by us and uh, how can we rectify those errors? How can we become error free? We may, we keep up uh, uh, making mistakes and uh, sins are accrued due to these errors and uh, it may be deliberate or uh, we may be uh, without our uh, no unknowingly we might have committed blunders. So there are mantras in this uh, Swadhyaya Brahmana of Taitiriya Aranyaka which help us to become error free. Making false promises when you very well know that you cannot, uh, those promises cannot be fulfilled. And then misrepresenting facts for the sake of livelihood. Then committing wrong actions out of jealousy, hatred, greed, malice, whatever. Hmm? And uh, they, that kind of actions, what happens when we do such, act, such activities, they result in, we, um, they result in um, uh, taking us in wrong path. So there are certain mantras which are called Kushmanda mantras. These Kushmanda mantras and uh, there is a homa called Kushmanda homa. They absolve all the sins committed by a person. And if one is able to get rid of these uh, sins, then he is fit to become a rishi. And we should ensure that we don't further indulge in such actions. Then the next chapter talks about how the rishis were able to receive the Vedic knowledge, how the later people through parampara out of compassion passed it on and how they in turn turned out to be rishis. Next comes the discussion on what do the rishis do as a routine. They are always into yajnas. 
there are five major yajnas mentioned in the shastras panchavahike mahayana satati pratayante satati santishthante each one of these yajnas are called mahayagnas though they are called so they can be performed within a short span of time they are to be done every day they are to be practiced every day the vedas and yajnas have a relationship of description and describer vedas describe the yajnas they can be just the yajnas can begin and they can get over in a short span of time so what are these five yajnas they are deva yajna pitr yajna bhuta yajna manushya yajna brahma yajna these are the ones which bring clarity to the word knowledge jnani swami jnani tvatmaiva me matam says shri krishna बहूनाम जन्मनाम अंते ज्ञानवान माम प्रपद्यते इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गेट अ पर्सन हु सेस वासुदेव सर्व स महात्मा सुदुर्लभ सो श्री कृष्ण सेस आई ट्रीट हिम एज मै सोल if i find a gnani so gnani mahatma yogi such words are used or reserved by shri krishna for a person who has realized the cosmic nature the universe through the who has realized the universe through the agency of the vedas who uh, works for the benefit of the universe and if we look at the these five yajnas they deal with different aspects of our own life the deva yajna here uh, <clears throat> this is not comprehensible to our senses actually we cannot see the devatas surya is a devata so uh, surya as a devata is different from the surya mandala which we see every day sun is shining in the sky we are able to see the uh, surya mandala it is the source of light according to the modern science also sun is a star he has got huge temperature but we cannot call that star as a devata there is a power there is a potence which is called devata that is because of the presence of that devata uh, things were or uh, the devata gives power to various objects devas per se are not directly experienced by us they are inferred through their power so deva yajna deals with doing homas in agni also yad agno juhoti api samidham tad deva yajnam santishthate those who practice nityagni hotra they will make a sankalpa that i want to do a deva yajna now and then take a samit samit is the twig of a tree there are certain trees which are meant to be used in the yajna only uh, uh, samit from those trees are to be used for yajnas they are palasha nyagrodha audumbara and ashwatha and uh, you can find their english names 
uh, once the class is over. And uh, this uh, summit, what should be its size? It should be 8 to 10 inches long, 1 centimeter in diameter. This is the description of a summit. And uh, take the summit of a Yagniya Vriksha. Not all the trees would do. Only the, those mentioned in the Shastras. A tree that is suitable and is mentioned in the Vedas. And you will say Agnaya Swaha, Indraya Swaha, whatever, whomever you want to um, please the date. Yad Agnav Juhoti Api Samidham Tat Deva Yadvya Santishthate. This is not for the exact act. Not everyone can take a summit and do Deva Yajna. It requires many things like ability. You should have the ability to perform that Yajna. Then we must have that knowledge how to do it. Then there should be a tradition. It should have been followed. Hmm? Then there should be a purpose. Why do you want to do a Yajna? That purpose should be there. The concept behind is very, very much important. Yajna as a concept is applicable to everyone. Though one is unable to experience the Devatas, he can definitely get the blessings of them. And uh, uh, by pleasing these Devatas, uh, by performing this Deva Yajna, uh, he will be pleasing the Devatas. And we can also help others to get such benefits. And um, I think we will stop here for today. In the next session, we will finish uh, this uh, uh, Yajna concept. And then uh, from then on, we will be moving to the Vedangas. So any questions now? No questions, sir. Okay. Uh, we will wind up and uh, hmm? uh, we'll take up the Yajnas uh, in the next oh, oh. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makas Chiddukha Bhagavet Om Shanti 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 Heat